Today we're going to be talking about preparing clinical research sites for FDA inspections. And I am Gary Freeman, and I have over 30 years' experience in the pharmaceutical and device industries, including presenting many workshops with and for FDA inspectors. I'm currently operating a niche provider company by the name of the Freeman Group, and we provide monitoring, auditing, and consulting services to the industry. In that regard, I have the opportunity very often to work with sites and my auditors also working with uh, investigators uh, and also with sponsors to prepare folks for an FDA inspection. We're going to concentrate on FDA today, but it also could be an inspection by a regulatory authority from around the world, because if the study is being used for a submission in a foreign country, that foreign regulatory agency does have the right to come to a sponsor here in the States or to an investigator in the States and review their information. They might do that particularly to review the source documents. Obviously, the trial master file is something they can get electronically, but if they're questioning the data itself or anything about the viability of the investigator, did they really have oversight and do they know what the study is about and so on, they do have the authority to come to the investigator's site and interview the investigator and staff and review the database. So we need to be prepared for that. Should they do that, it would be the same exact procedure with different forms, but the same procedure that the FDA would have if they were to visit an investigator uh, here. Also, just know that the FDA does have offices around the world, and they're able to go to any site in the world um, also to do an inspection if that data is going to be used in a submission back here. So we often do mock inspections or mock audits, as we put them, uh, we call the audits the work that's done by your quality assurance companies, uh, groups, and third-party companies. If the FDA or other regulatory authority is conducting this scenario, it would be called technically an inspection. Although we do call, usually say we have FDA auditors coming to do an FDA, inspect, FDA audit. They're technically inspectors and inspections. So today we're going to be discussing the FDA inspections of sites and how to best prepare them for a possible inspection. We do have one disclaimer here, and that is that the content does provide information about the FDA more so than the global regulatory authorities. So the forms are going to be referring to the numbers and not names of the FDA forms. The content is not intended to provide specific legal advice. If there's anything legal, you should really have your attorney uh, review that information. And we're going to ask you to consult with legal counsel for guidance to particular facts. We're not going to discuss a specific situation on today's call. We have several learning objectives. One of them is to recognize the anatomy of an audit or an inspection. What is it like? What do they do? How, does it how is it organized? What is audit readiness? We need to really start this process when we start our study. Monitors are very much involved in this, right from the very site selection. The FDA has often said, if we spent more time selecting our sites, we wouldn't have the problem at the end. And that seems to be very true. We need to prepare our sites with the large deficiencies. There's a lot of information available on the website, fda.gov, that we can go to during the course of the study. And the recommendation is that on each monitoring visit, we can bring up one good clinical practice to the site, even the best sites. We can update them, bringing in guidance documents. The guidance documents now are being issued for all of the groups, the drug group, the biologic group, and the device group. So it makes it very easy, and they're user-friendly. So it makes a very nice package to bring to a site. And again, even the best sites learn. They also learn how their colleagues may be not doing a good job, which is why we have to monitor so intensively. We're going to talk about the mission of the FDA and the BIMO program. The BIMO program is the Bio Research Monitoring Organization. This is the group that would come out regionally. The FDA has regional offices around the world, and they would come to do this inspection. They're not the scientists that are looking to see if the product works. These are the people looking to see if we've met the regulations. That might be the FDA's regulation. 
in the Code of Federal Regulations. It might be the ICH, International Conference on Harmonization, if we're talking about global studies. It might be the SOPs of a company. It might be the SOPs of the IRB. Any of the stakeholders, the CRO, any vendors such as labs will be included in that inspection. We're going to look at the timing for an audit. When would the most likely time be? What would they be looking for? And what do we have to do to follow up on this? So the mechanics from the start to end are going to be important for us to review. We're going to have the slide set on your screen. You have a copy of that. There's also a number of handouts, as I call them. They're tabs on our, on our screen today. And we have eight of them for this session. Those are good reference material for you to pull up and print out, perhaps, after class. I'll flash them up to you as we go through so you see which one we're talking about. But you don't need to have those available on the screen for today. Again, they're excellent reference materials for you. Thank you.